it was like um, that they said that your your um, mental capacity was the the age of what? A five year old guy yeah. was like, "No, tell her that you need help." And I was like, "Yes, ma'am, I need help." Um, I wanted to kill the guy that I became, and then and then she yells out, "You know, code code nine or whatever it was, right?" Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I just remember just they 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 they, they go in there and give me a wheelchair bring it back out and say, Hey, you know what? He wants to kill himself. And I kept on saying, no, 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 I don't want to kill myself. I want to kill the guy Um, that I became. I just remember just having that door cracked and my mom takes an, uh, uh, taking off around this little corner and, and just, you know, you know, flowing it. And all of a sudden I, I come falling out the car. Right. And they see this flash of light. And then, uh, they actually stopped the car, come and get me. And, I didn't have any scars. I wasn't bleeding anything. And I, and I had on shorts, you know, and um, all she kept on saying is that there, there's no way that he's not cut. He's not hurt. He's not bleeding. It's no way, you know, because that was like 50 feet of tumbling. Hey y'all, I'm Romania and welcome to My Story for His Glory. I believe that we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. I want you to understand that that thing that you went through, that thing that you survived, is going to be the strength that a person next to you needs to make it through. So if you want to share your story, I need for you to contact us at 757-339-0372. Your story is worth being heard, and it's actually someone else's deliverance. Real life meets real deliverance on My Story for His Glory. You know what? We've been waiting for this part right here. So I want you to rewind a little bit and I want you to take us and tell us the story of your sister and and your journey to heaven. Oh, yeah. You had to give me goose, you gave me goosebumps. Mm. Man. Yeah. So um, back when she was like five, I used to always t- drop her off to nursery. I used to come and get her. But so every time she used to always i come in the door. She always used to run and say, hey, big brother. She always called me that, right? And um, just run and jump in the air. I grab her and spin around and we like walk home. And and, and so it was a spot in the area. And, and I, I kept on saying, this is where heaven's at. You know, it's streets of gold and angels are flying up and everything. And, you know, this is where we're going to be one day. And uh, she was like, um, can, can we take a plane up there? Or train, and I was like, nah, 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 you gotta die to go to heaven, you know. And um, it's be, it's gonna be between you, God, and Jesus, right? You know, and 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 that five, five years old, believe in everything. So every time we used to walk past the spot, she'd say, Hey, that's heaven up there. And I'm like, Yeah, we're gonna go one day. And um, that day came soon in 09. 09, she actually passed away. Um, let me just wind, rewind the night before, I had a dream. Now, uh, two weeks straight, she was calling me for like two weeks straight every day. And we would talk. And, um, oh, man, we, I, I would just crack up and everything. But for two weeks straight, we would actually talk on the phone. And the last day I spoke to her, um, we was making all these kind of jokes. But every night I would have a dream about her, that she would turn this corner, start running towards me and jump. And I would grab her, you know, spin her around and we would just walk off. So this one night, I had the same dream. Uh, she come out, run into me, but this time she actually ran right through me, you know? And and if you've never had a person in your dream run through you, oh man, that is that is the most scariest uh, type of feeling. And if that do happen, I suggest you get up and you call whoever that person is. But that was her. And I knew right then and then that she was actually trans, you know, that she, she actually left. And um, that was rough for me. That was uh, rough for me. 
And I just remember in 09, when she came back, um, I was in my room and I heard this music in the hallways. And I kept on saying, I know my sons don't have the music on. It's like six o'clock in the morning. It's blasting. I heard all this uh, tamarines and everything playing. And um, it wasn't. It wasn't. And I was going back to my room and I heard my sister's voice. And I was like, man, that's weird, you know? And I said, you know what? Let me just sit here at the table and see if I'm hearing everything right. Because maybe I'm just hallucinating, I'm just tripping. So I sat there and right when I was about to get up, I heard the music playing again, you know, you know, you know, music and spiritual music go through one ear out the other, you know? And I heard her voice and I was like, oh, sis, if that's you, I can't hear you because the music is, is loud. And all the music went out and I can hear her voice. And she's like, hey, big brother, it's me. Just like that. And I just remember just getting up and I burst out in tears. And when I and when I when I had my eyes closed, I could see her. You know, so I don't want to have my eyes closed because I was like, man, what was that? I was like, man, what was that? And I just remember just, you know, I had my eyes all, you know, wide. And I'm like, man, I don't want I don't want to have my eyes closed because I see her. You know, and when I did blink again, I saw her again and she's reaching out to me. And I'm like, man, what is going on? You know, this she is said, how hey. many days after she passed, Quest? Um, a day or two, maybe. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I just remember just her reaching out to me. And I'm like, man, you know, this seems so real. This seems so real. And then all of a sudden I started, I, it was an image. And next thing you know, I could see her clearly. Mm-hmm. And she said, hey, brother, mama, when I was five years old, and you showed me how heaven looked. And I was like, yeah. And she said, well, God told me that I can come down here and show you heaven. And I started crying again. And she said, but brother, hold it. You can't cry. You can't cry because in the spirit world, there's no tears. You know, there's no tears in heaven. And if you keep crying, you're not going to see what I have to show you. So I calmed myself down. She's like, you know, take some deep, deep, you know, breaths. Calm myself down. And uh, I was like, hold up. So you mean to tell me that? We're going to have it. And she said, yeah, I'm going to show you heaven. You know? And I started crying. Man, I was like a big baby. I'm telling you. Yeah. I started crying because I was so, I was, I don't, I don't scare easy cough because off my training, but that made me so nervous because, because now I'm thinking like, okay, how are we, how are we going to get to heaven? You know, I didn't die, you know? And then, then I kept on saying, hold up. Am I dying right now? And she was like, no, silly, you know? No, you know. I would ask too. <laughs> right, right, right. So, as we started like walking, and we started floating, I just happened to actually look back, and there was a guy at my table, and I said, "Yo, sis, hold up. Why is a guy at my table?" And she's like, "Silly, that's you at the table." And I'm like, "What do you mean it's me?" And she's like, "That's you at the table," and I could zoom in real quick and see me. You know, I have my head down. And I could see myself. And it looks, having an out-of-body experience, you won't even recognize yourself mm-hmm. at all, at mm-hmm. all, at all, you know? And um, so I'm just looking like, damn, hold up. I'm that big? I'm that, I'm that, you know, huge, right? Because I just look different, you know? It just look, look different. And we just went to heaven, you know? We went to heaven. It was... It was so phenomenal as far as like, because I just remember just going through the ceiling and it was all white. And it was just like, it was like a, a coldness, you know, a coldness. And it's all white, foggy. Next thing you know, you start seeing like clouds, mm-hmm. right? And I'm in the clouds, right? Mm-hmm. So I see this dove, I see this dove flying next to me. And I'm like, wow, this is really neat, right? You know? And she's like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, this is how you do it in heaven, right? Now we're in paradise. And I just remember just, you know, her just flying around, doing tricks in the sky, figure eights, everything. And I'm trying to do the same thing. But I couldn't because I haven't passed over yet. And 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 that's where my training start. Right then and there. Mm-hmm. That's when God's showing me these are the stages that you go through in heaven, you know. And it was just stages and stuff that, we, you know, her and I was just going through. And I just remember just... When we went, I actually went through the clouds and stood up there. It was all clouds. 
And I just remember just seeing this huge TV. I, I thought it was a, a TV because even in heaven, I could be myself. It wasn't like I was in heaven and was like, oh, this is heaven, you know? I was, <laughs> I, I was myself, right? You know, cracking jokes. I was myself. Like, man, hold up. You know, this, you know, maybe this, you know? And I thought it was a huge TV, but it wasn't, right? Mm -hmm. So I tried to touch it and it, and it moved back. And then when she uh, came up on it, it actually came up on her. And when she touched it, it lit up. Mm. And then I kept hearing this baby cry. And I kept on saying, I know that cry. Be I, I heard that cry before. And I said, hold up. That's your cry as a baby, mm -hmm. you know? And I just remember God speaking to her. And she's at the book of life. And God is showing her every photo of your, of your life is right there. From the right. time you're a baby to the time you actually cross over. And you standing right there at the book of life and God is asking you questions. And the first question that I heard him say, did you forgive Michelle? And she said, yeah, I forgave her. After that, I didn't hear anything. So everything I was looking at, I was taking it in, you know, forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. But again, God asked, hey, did you forgive? Because a lot of people don't forgive people, you know? And um, yeah, and so... We just kept on going through stages in heaven, you know? And, um, oh, man, I tell you, I, there's a fountain in heaven that has water. And she was drinking this water. And it was going down, you know, a spirit lit up, you know, a nice blue. So I'm trying to, I'm trying to drink the water because I want what she has, right? But it's not lighting up, you know, again, because I haven't crossed over. Mm -hmm. And, again, God is just showing me everything that, you know, is happening. And I just remember just going through all these stages, you know, and then we encountered these angels, you know, and that was when I'm a kid to see angels is different from now that I'm in heaven and I'm seeing these angels because it's nothing like I saw when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Now I'm in heaven and I'm seeing these angels. And when, when they came up on me, they were huge, mm -hmm. huge, 12 feet. Wow. Huge. And when I, when I look back at my sit, first thing I said is um cuz I smell sugar cookies. Mm -hmm. Right? Because because angels angel smell like sugar cookies, right? <laughs> there was no there was nobody, I mean, there was nothing in hand, you know, you know, having first response me and my sister in the book of life, right? Next thing you know, um I'm like, "Sis, you smell that?" And she's like, "Smell what?" I'm like, "I smell sugar cookies." And she was like, I do smell sugar cookies. And next thing you know, out the, you know, out the clouds, we see these, you know, angels coming towards us. And I remember just standing in front of her, like, like a big brother, you know, and they came upon us and they both spoke at the same time, which I thought was amazing, yeah. you know, because they talk in harmony. And I'm like, wow, you guys talk, right? You guys talk in harmony? And they was like, yes, Quest. And I was like, yo, they know my name, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You talk you talk about mind blowing, mind blowing. Right? I'm like, yo, they know my name. Like, what? What? You know? And then you know, he's smiling and laughing. And I'm like, hold up, angels laugh? You know, and they will say yes. You know? And I'm like, man, who who is gonna believe what I'm seeing? You know? And they say, Oh, you're not believing what you're seeing, you know? And I'm like, no, I, it's not that, it's the fact that it's, it's just so much to take in, mm -hmm. you know? And I just kept on saying, man, man, this is phenomenal. Mm -hmm. This is phenomenal, mm -hmm. you know? And I look back at my sister and she's like, I don't have any questions. And I was like, why are you not having any questions? You know, but I didn't understand at the time, mm -hmm. but it was me learning everything in heaven mm -hmm. because she's there already, you know? And I just found myself just, just asking questions, you know? You know, I was like, how did so, so are y'all walking or y'all floating? You know, because it was like a, it was like a cool walk or a cool float, you know? So, so I asked that question, are we walking? Are we? And, um, of course I didn't answer it, but we just, you know, uh, went to the next stage. What was know? the next stage? Um, in the next stage, um, there's this, there's this bright light and, um, this is probably the same like everybody talks about. It's like, man, this light is so, so, so strong and that it, it actually pulls you in. 
you know? And my sister actually went through first. And I kept on saying, well, hold up, hold up, hold up. I just want to make sure that I didn't die. Because this is a light. I think everybody's, everybody's talking about the same light, right? Like, I'm going to go to the light, right? And I kept on saying, man, listen, y'all sure I didn't die, right? And they're like, I didn't die, right? So I go through the light, and it, and it, and it's, it is so bright. The light, and next thing you know, you know, you start seeing um, all the sparkliness, right? All the sparkle. And we come up on the kingdom, you know, per, you know, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, kingdom. And we came up on it, and they had like five foot roses around the whole kingdom, right? Mm. And they had diamonds on the side of the kingdom. And I'm wow. just, I'm just, I'm, I'm just touching them, and I'm like, man, these are like diamonds, right? And it was just so gorgeous, you know. Mm. I kept on telling my sister, man, I cannot believe, man, like, you know, we, I'm standing right here with you. You know, and I, I'm I'm touching, I'm touching all these diamonds on the side of the uh, you know kingdom, you know, and I kept on saying, listen, we have to go inside, but I didn't see a door yet, and I just remind me it was just me and my sister standing here, and then the angel stood here, and the other one angel stood there, and then their wings was like spread out, and next thing you know, there was this gold uh, door appeared. Mm. Now, I can tell you how the door opened. I just know that the door appeared and it opened up. And I just remember just seeing a blue ray of light just shining through. And we walked in the kingdom. Wow. And, right when, and right when I walked in, I just I just happened to look up. And, and I saw all these people. And, and I kept on saying, are oh, these people? And it was like, nah, these are angels waiting to, waiting, waiting to get called, you know, you know, on earth. Well, wait a minute now. Say that again. Say it again. One more time, Quest. When I, walk, when I walked in, I saw nothing but angels standing around waiting waiting to get called to earth. Because a, a lot of people don't call upon angels. So we got angels that are just sitting around waiting. Sitting, sitting around waiting to be called. To be called. To be called. To do what, Quest? Help us. In need of anything, you know, a lot a lot of people don't believe, but they believe, you know. Mm -hmm. You start talking about angels, you know. You get people saying, ah, you know, angels. I don't, you know. But I'm like, no, listen, they real, mm -hmm. you know. It's it's, it's real, mm -hmm. you know. As a kid to an adult, now I'm in the kingdom looking at angels, mm -hmm. waiting to get called. Mm -mm. Wow. Wow. Yeah. You know, and um that's why I tell everybody, man, hey, you, you think you, you, hey, you think it's a joke? Ain't no joke. Ain't no joke. You know? Because I get asked all the time, why do you think it happened to you? Why do you think God showed you heaven of all people? You ain't no pastor, you ain't no bishop, none of that. I just said because I have a message, you know. God wanted somebody like me, you mm. know. You know, so somebody like me with the testimony, everything that I went through to come to heaven and say, hey, it's going to be OK. If you believe and if you keep your faith 100 percent, because a lot of people online, on the phone, don't have 100 percent faith. They don't believe. And they we don't believe. believe. And, and, and I like how you said that, like your sister, because I know that, you know, that you had mentioned one time before when we were talking that your sister was, you know, uh, in church, you know, she was saved and oh, she could not understand why God, wait a minute, where, I know what my Bible at, where your Bible at? Why God mm -hmm. showing you all these things? But God took this ordinary guy. And it showed him this, it's given him these extraordinary gifts and it's shown him this extraordinary thing. And now he has this extraordinary message. If I say extraordinary one more time. <laughs> <laughs> to bring back to the people. I love that, that he chose you. He is not a respecter of person. He chooses who he wants to choose and he uses who he chooses to he use. Wants. Period. Yes. yes, period, period, period. The same, yes. It's the same way it happened to me. It can happen to anybody, anybody. And that's what I believe, you know? And um, yeah, so I didn't want to come back from heaven. 
you know, the colors, you know, how it smell. Um, I didn't want to come back at all. What were the know? colors like, Quest? Well, every time I paint, I try to use the same colors or uh, I try to get my colors to almost the exact colors to what I saw in heaven. Mm-hmm. You know, the metallic, bright colors uh, with, with sparkling. You know, everything is alive. You know, the roses, you know, uh, I came up on the roses and the roses bowed to me, you know, and um, it was so lifelike, you know, and they spit out this glitter and that glitter just went on all the grass. The grass started shimmering, this nice, pretty green color all the way around the whole kingdom, mm-hmm. you know. So in my paintings, mm-hmm. I try to have that same vibe, you know. And we're going to get to see um, some of his paintings, guys, where you can see how his visit to heaven influenced his art. And and, and then you didn't used to do any art prior to this experience. Isn't that right, Quest? I wasn't doing I wasn't doing no paintings or anything because all that was gone. You know, I was mad at God, you know, and God woke me up one day and was like, man, Quest, you're going to be painting for the world to see. And I said, God, you tripping. You gonna wake me up? I was sleep. I was sleeping good too. I said, you gonna wake me up and tell me this nonsense? Nah, dog, you tripping? Cause I don't even paint. You know, and and again, this is discipline because he gave me the instructions what to do. Mm-hmm. And he said, Nah, I want you to go down to. The, I said, I said, I said, I said, God, you know why you tripping? Because at that time frame, I only had eight dollars to my name because I was going through my accident. I wasn't working. I was on workers' comp. And everybody know comp nobody pay you like that, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I had eight dollars to my name, and I'm thinking in my head, I'm gonna get some nonchos, I'm gonna get some non latus, you know, and a slurpee. That's eight dollars. That's what I was thinking. And God was like, nah, you're gonna take that eight dollars and go get a, a a frame and some art supplies. And I said, God, you tripping. And he gave me the the the, the instructions from A to B. And I followed him. I went out to the thrift store. I, he said, the first the, the first canvas you see, you get that one. I walk in the store. I see a canvas. I get it. You know how much it was? $7.99. I was mad at God because I was like, you know what, God? You really tripping because I got $8. Now I got to spend my last $8 <laughs> on it. You know? So at that time frame, too, I'm talking out loud because I couldn't control my feelings on my thoughts, right? So I'm talking out loud, and people are like staring like, oh, he crazy, girl, he crazy, right? You know? This is what I was saying. Yo, dude, crazy, he talking to himself. But I was like, God, you tripping right now because I got seven, I got, I got $8. God is like, don't worry about it. It's going to happen. I went to the cash register, and they said, oh, guess what day it is? I said, what day? They was like, it's half off day. I said, really? You know, so I'm thinking in my head, okay, half off. I can still get some non-lapes, right? Some Skittles or something, right? You know, I was just like, okay. So she said, oh, and by the way, this canvas is actually torn. So that's another $2. So I'm thinking in my head, like, wow, okay, hold up. God said $8. Oh, all I need is $8. That that canvas was, was only two dollars, and I walked up the store with a canvas that was two dollars. And um, next thing you know, I went to Home Depot. I got my paint and my supplies, all eight dollars, and I made my first painting. So, in, with that eight dollars, you were able to get everything you needed to make your first painting. Everything I yep, everything I did, eight dollars. And when you guys see gorgeous. his artwork. I'm telling you, it's absolutely beautiful. But Quest, we got a, we have a question up here um, where um, they ask, how do we, and I think she means activate the angels in our walk? You, you, you kind of just pray for them and ask for them, mm-hmm. you know? You just got to just ask for them, mm-hmm. and they will come. Because they're sitting there and they're waiting. But they they're waiting. sitting there and they're waiting for us. Waiting. As I stood there, I seen angels like disappear, mm-hmm. and I knew that someone probably called them and everything. 
you know, but a lot of them were just standing around just waiting. So, mm. yeah, you just call upon them and they right there. And they're right there. They're if right you start there. smelling, anything, if you start smelling anything burnt or sugar cookies. They're right there. And they smell like sugar cookies, y'all. <laughs> yeah. You're going to probably smell like a little burnt stench first, right? And then you're going to smell that kind of like something like somebody's baking a cake or something. Well, I think we probably, you know, everybody, God deals with all of us differently, you know. Right. And so he does, you know, they might smell like sugar cookies to you and they might <laughs> smell like yeah. cinnamon toast to me. I don't know. But um, the thing is, is that angels are real and that yes. they're sitting there in heaven waiting to be dispatched, yes. to go yes. forth and help us help everybody out to do the thing that God has called us to do. And then you heard him say about being obedient. Obedience oh, yeah. is the key. You know, what oh, I'm yeah. saying? even down to his last eight dollars. And when you see the artwork, which we were, which is what we're getting ready to to talk about so go ahead as far as um heaven how did that how did that whole thing turn out your visit to heaven oh it was nice because um in heaven i saw this i saw this huge tiger and it, and i kept on saying what is that about and i never questioned god what is that about until uh years later and god told me well, I told you before, but your party wasn't listening. Mm -hmm. He's like, it means absolute power, strength, and courage. And those are the three elements that you're going to need to get through what you're going to have to get through. Mm -hmm. And I, now, hold up. What do you mean get through what, what I have to get, get through? I ain't going through anything. And then I have my accident. Mm -hmm. So God knew it was like, you know, you need, you need those three elements to get through, mm -hmm. you know, after power, strength and courage. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow. OK, OK. And, and that's what I was saying. Everything that God was saying that was going to happen, it happened. You know, it was happening. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to believe it was happening, but it was happening. Mm -hmm. And then I took all my denial out. I called it. I said, you know what? I can't do this no more. I can't be in denial who I am and what God is trying to show me. So we should never be in denial of what God is trying to show you. Never. Even but what I will ask is, it seems like in different stages of your life, do you think you had different angels like you had the angel that played the frisbee you had the angel that mm. saved you um multiple times do you think it was the same one or do you think there was just a host at different stages of your life 